2,500 years ago, Hippocrates, the father of nutrition and medicine, laid out the following 10 rules, which have been largely ignored by the medical profession. 1. The natural way is the only way. 2. Treat the cause of an illness, not the symptom. 3. Look to the spine for illnesses. 4. Throw away your drugs and heal the people with food. 5. Most illnesses can be prevented by eating natural foods. 6. A healthy colon is essential. 7. Do not administer dangerous and harmful drugs. 8. Do no harm to your patients. 9. Do not perform surgery for money. 10. The word protein means most important. Just to show you how ignorant medical doctors are, and just how little they know about nutrition and the human body. I got into an argument at a party with a doctor who told me that you must consume fiber in order to have a bowel movement. And, if you don't have carbohydrates, your brain cannot function. I told him the story of when I lived on the farm where an American Plains Indian, Indian Joe, worked for my grandfather in return for food and shelter. The Indian never ate anything but meat. When my grandparents would slaughter a steer or a hog, they would put it in the cellar and Indian Joe would go down and eat it. He never ate fruits or vegetables. I asked this doctor how it was that Indian Joe could live to be 115 years old and survive without carbohydrates. And how could the Indian have had a bowel movement without fiber? I told this doctor that I would explain it to him since he didn't seem to know. By eating too much fiber, you can overfiberize, and you can actually weaken your colon. You weaken the muscles of your colon to move the waste out. If you want to push the waste out and you don't eat fiber, you do that by properly digesting the food you eat, which most Americans don't do resulting in acid reflex. I explained to the doctor that when a person eats protein, the digested protein goes into the liver and the liver promptly converts the digested protein to amino acids, which are the building blocks of the body, and they go into his bloodstream and then, on command from the brain, which subsists on glucose, amino acids are converted to glucose. This doctor did not know that. Most doctors do not know much about the human body and nutritional functions. They are basically trained to diagnose a disease and then give you a drug to suppress the symptoms of your so-called disease. They have no idea what causes the disease. For example, arthritis. They state that there is no known cause and no known cure. A chiropractor knows more about nutrition and the musculoskeletal structure of the human body than a medical doctor does and many medical doctors will even admit that. Natural holistic doctors know what causes diseases, but it is against the law to say it. Is Hitler still alive? The majority of the people in this country just aren't aware of what's going on around them when it comes to the greed and the ignorance of the medical profession and their sponsors. The pharmaceutical companies, who subsidize and control all medical schools. If you combine the profits of all the products of the world, including lumber, cars, oil, clothing, and steel, they don't even come close to the profits of the pharmaceutical industries. The drug industry uses insidious, mind conditioning tactics via the press, magazines, billboards, radio and television to distribute their poisons. Their motto is eliminate the competition, meaning the vitamin, mineral and food supplement industry. Where there is no competition, you have a monopoly. If it's political you call it communism and fascism. Now that 40% of all Americans are going to holistic doctors and taking vitamins and minerals, the pharmaceutical companies are advertising more and more on TV because they, along with the FDA, are losing millions and millions of dollars. In order to keep their huge profit margin, they are now creating diseases such as intermittent clotication and acid reflux and making drugs for these diseases. Soon, through pending legislation, it will be illegal to treat any disease with anything other than a pharmaceutical drug, therefore excluding the use of natural substances for treatment. The ultimate goal of the drug companies, with the help of the FDA, is to label all vitamins and minerals drugs, therefore giving them control. By the stroke of a corrupt senator's pen, this could become law. In 1900, the pharmaceutical companies literally shut the natural holistic movement right out of American life and they want to do it again this time permanently. They have no interest in preventing any diseases, only in treating the symptoms after you already have a disease. 
medical doctors and the pharmaceutical companies have no incentive to cure you of anything because, if they found cures for diseases, they would go out of business. Once you've got the disease, they will treat the symptom, not the cause. Therefore the disease never goes away, but you will be taking a drug for the rest of your life and making them rich as you do. You have the right to be your own doctor and learn how to prevent disease. People say that I am against medical doctors. This is not true, but I feel that doctors should do what they are trained to do, which is deliver babies, perform cosmetic surgery, set broken bones, treat trauma, remove appendix, and so on. They should not be dabbling in nutrition because they know nothing about it and what's more, never have. There are no such things as diseases. Most diseases are just nutritional deficiencies. They never seem to remember that their mentor, Hippocrates, told them to throw away your drugs and heal the people with food. Food is medicine and medicine is food. If I needed surgery, if I was in trauma, or if I had a broken bone, I would go to a medical doctor, simple as that. In the late 1800s, the direction of healthcare changed from prevention to dealing with diseases when you have them. Creating the money factor. I often refer to the Homer Simpson mentality that Americans have. If you buy it in the grocery store, it must be good. If you see it on TV, it must be true and if you read it in the newspaper, it must be accurate. Recently, when I was in the drugstore to purchase some band-aids, two teens were talking about the medications that they were on. One for diabetes and one for acne. These kids have been led to believe that taking drugs on a daily basis is perfectly normal and that everybody should be taking them. They think that these drugs are medicine. Let me tell you right now that drugs are not medicine. In the Bible, Galatians 5.20 tells us that it is a sin to use pharmakeia to alter the mind or the body. Pharmakeia is a Greek word that means spiritism, sorcery, witchcraft, poison and druggery. While traveling on the expressway recently, I saw a sign advertising spinal surgery at a certain local hospital. Hospitals are making any surgery seem normal and they advertise about how caring they are in order to get you in there. In the past, hospitals and drug companies never advertised, but now that they have become such big businesses, they are vying for your dollar. The ad asks, do you have a Beaumont doctor? They are advertising for your business by making you think that surgery and drugs are normal, but they aren't normal. Turn on your radio, open a magazine. Read a newspaper or watch television and you are exposed to countless ads for junk food and drugs. It's unbelievable. They have a master plan that includes trying to implant in your mind that drugs are normal. But that can only happen if you let them do it. They aren't telling you to eat well, or to take vitamins and minerals, to be healthy. They have no incentive to do that because it doesn't make them money. I heard a report on the Paul Harvey radio show where the medical profession admitted that their heart surgeries and bypass surgeries didn't work over a period of time but they were going to keep performing them because it was so profitable. Can you imagine them admitting that? In the 4th of April, 1998 Journal of the American Medical Association they admitted that prescription drugs kill up to 400,000 people a year. Why didn't all the newspapers jump on that and tell the public that drugs are killing people? If you think there's not a cover-up, think again. The FDA has ignored it completely, while they continue to attack natural substances in healing. What disturbs me the most is that Christian churches are ignoring the Bible's many teachings of nutrition and health. What we are now seeing in the media, controlled by pharmaceutical companies advertising, is a viscous attack of the vitamin industry. Of course the vitamin industry is like any other industry with both good and bad companies. It has both honest and dishonest people, just like any other company in America. The majority of vitamin companies in this country are respected, decent and honest retailers of quality vitamins and minerals. The pharmaceutical companies have targeted many segments of the vitamin industry. They claim that vitamin A causes cancer, yet their studies are based on skewed 5-year-old data using a synthetic vitamin A. There are two types of vitamins, synthetics made in a laboratory out of petrochemicals or coal tars, and natural vitamins and minerals extracted from food. A drug company that makes vitamins and minerals states that all vitamins and minerals are the same. But that is not true. Synthetics are not utilized by the body. Recent media reports, in another effort to put fear in the American public about vitamins and minerals, tell us that taking more than 200 IU daily of vitamin E can cause heart attacks. The drug companies are also equating the steroids that baseball, 
football and hockey players misuse with nutritional supplements, and, by doing so, they are preparing the American public to brand vitamins and minerals as something that must be controlled by the medical profession. Of course, drug companies would then have to produce them and medical doctors would have to write prescriptions for them. If all nutrition products are so harmful, as the FDA says, why not just put warning labels on them, instead of taking away your choice to buy them. Cigarettes have warning labels and you are free to choose to buy them. The Codex Alimentarius Commission, Codex for short, is an organization that was formed by the World Health Organization, WHO, and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, to protect the health of consumers and to ensure fair trade practices in the food industry. The pharmaceutical companies have unscrupulously managed to get a health reform bill in play, backed by Codex, saying that vitamins and minerals need to be controlled by drug companies for the protection of all countries and their people. How benevolent. The pharmaceutical companies have covered up the fact that one of the most important minerals in the world is selenium. Our soil is devoid of selenium just as the soil is devoid of about half the other minerals of the earth. There are 92 minerals in the world, and, because of factory farming, our soil is devoid of about 45 minerals. Because of the lack of minerals, we must take supplements in this country. It is proven that if you maintain a therapeutic amount of selenium, it will prevent 60% of every cancer that is created in the human body. The medical profession, drug companies and the FDA know this and have suppressed it. That is both frightening and despicable. It is not profitable in this country for you to be healthy. It is profitable for you to be sick. Look around you and see how many people are taking pharmaceutical drugs and are still sick. There is a frightening story that I want to tell you about a law that has been implemented by the pharmaceutical industry, medical doctors and the government, to demonstrate their dictatorial powers. I have some friends who had a child with cancer and they went to a medical doctor who wanted to put the child on chemotherapy and radiation. The child's parents had also been customers of mine so they asked my advice on what to do. I recommended that they go to a doctor in Texas or a holistic doctor south of Tijuana, Mexico. The doctor in Texas was a medical doctor, Dr. Brodzinski, MD, who has a cure for cancer but was again viscously attacked by the medical profession, drug companies and FDA. The holistic doctor south of Tijuana was Dr. Kurt Donspach who had a 70% cure rate of cancer but was drummed out of this country by the same culprits. After the child's parents thought everything through, they refused the traditional treatment and planned to go see Dr. Brodzinski in Texas. Here is where the law comes in. If a medical doctor evaluates your child for cancer, even just once, and you instead choose to get treatment from alternative doctors, the government can take your child away from you and that is exactly what they did to my friends. The authorities came to the house to take the child away and when the parents said that they refused to give up the child, they were told that they would be arrested and put in jail. The child was then subjected to chemotherapy and radiation, and, sadly, died. Look into the law and you'll find out that it's true. Where's the freedom of choice here? I also have a client, who was a visiting nurse in Chicago, who went on a nutritional program to combat a variety of health problems that she had. She was so enthused about how beneficial the program was that, when she visited patients in their homes or in nursing homes, she would advocate that they change their diets, take vitamins and minerals and that they try to get away from pharmaceutical drugs. She had tremendous success with her patients. About five months after she had started doing this, her boss called her into his office. She was expecting a pat on the back for helping to change the lives of these patients. Instead, he advised her that they were in the drug business and not in the vitamin and mineral business. He told her that if she didn't stop recommending nutrition, vitamins and minerals to her patients, she would soon be looking for another job. She was completely shocked. She subsequently left that profession and is doing something else for a living. My mother was in a nursing home and died there. The food that is served in nursing homes is garbage. Nearly every patient is on drugs and most of them are on a dozen or so different drugs. Do these homes exist to help make the patients healthy or are they there for profit? I thought that medical doctors were supposed to be interested in your health. Aha, uh -huh. sure. I recall an article that was in the Reader's Digest about 4 or 5 years ago that studied the medical profession in Florida and they discovered that the reason why medical doctors were prescribing so many tests was because the doctors either owned 
the diagnostic center or their friends owned it. As an example, a CAT scan or an MRI cost anywhere from $1,000 to $1,200 and the Reader's Digest article revealed that if a doctor sent a patient to a particular lab, the doctor would get a $400 kickback. I wish that some senators and congressmen would look into all the testing that is being done on patients and how much of it is necessary versus how much is for profit. Dr. Julian Whitaker, the wonderful medical doctor who is an 85% holistic vitamin and mineral advocate, has repeatedly reminded the American Medical Association and drug companies that most of the murderous tragedies in Columbine, San Diego, Houston, Pittsburgh, etc., were perpetrated by adults and children who were on psychotic drugs such as Zoloft, Ritalin and Prozac. Yet the medical profession and the press have ignored that fact. Dr. Whitaker has also voiced his displeasure with the FDA and has said that they are protecting drug company profits and not the American public. Seems to be the norm these days. The Constitution states that the government is responsible for the health and welfare of its people, not for the profits of huge corporations. Our Congress should be reminded of this. Why is the government attacking the vitamin and mineral industry and not the harmful pharmaceutical, tobacco and alcohol industries? Money and corruption again. A local well-known hospital advertises that you will encounter real doctors with real advice who give real medicine. Is that the same real medicine that was given to women for hormone replacement? Causing heart attacks, strokes, seizures, breast cancer, harming their livers and kidneys and killing thousands of women? It is now known that Ritalin for children can permanently damage a child's brain. Prozac and mind-altering drugs induce suicide. There is documentation to prove that children who are on a cutane for acne have a severe increased risk of committing suicide. When I worked at General Motors, a friend in the next department lost his son to suicide because of a cutane. But, because of the drug company's legal protection laws in Michigan, he could not sue the company. Now we are hearing a lot about how the popular painkillers, Celebrex, Vioxx, etc. are causing seizures and heart attacks. Is that real advice and real medicine? My interpretation of a real doctor is a doctor of a holistic nature that wants to find out what causes your problem, not just treat your disease. Real advice is to eat natural food and take care of yourself with better nutrition. It is proven now that real medicines are food and nutritional supplements. Now, everywhere you look, you read and hear that vitamins and minerals are conducive to preventing and helping various diseases. Nutritional education is starting to surface and that is why the medical community is running scared. Again, with the stroke of a pen. All nutritional supplements could be called drugs and be under the auspices of pharmaceutical companies and medical doctors. There are many holistic doctors who are interested in finding the cause of a disease. One of them is Dr. David Jantz at the Alternative Health Clinic in Gross Point Woods, Michigan. His recommendations to you include good nutrition, taking nutritional supplements to increase your immune system, and implementing natural food in your daily living. Many other holistic doctors such as Dr. Randy Tent, Dr. Brian Sanborn, and the father of Kra Muscle Testing, Dr. Dick Versenball, are helping people when modern methods fail. The pharmaceutical giants are trying to shut nutrition out. They unsuccessfully lobbied to have a bill passed by Congress in 1994 that would have made it so that all vitamins and minerals would be dispensed by prescription only, and they are trying to resurface with a similar bill. Slowly but surely, they are stripping you of all your nutrition like red rice, yeast, and mahorn, etc. By the way, it wasn't mahorn that killed people, it was the abuse of it. Anybody over the age of 40 that I speak to about the conspiracy of the drug companies is concerned and realizes that it is wrong. However, the pharmaceutical companies are not concerned about anybody over 40. They are concerned about introducing and implanting the normalcy of drug use in children's minds at as early an age as possible. It is just like the food industry that has made American children think that processed and refined foods, such as sugary cereals, donuts, cookies, hamburgers, french fries, etc. are all normal and natural. Children today have no idea what natural foods taste like. Thanks to the money-hungry processed and refined food industry. Read the book Fast Food Nation by Eric Schlosser. It will frighten you. See the movie Super Size about a gentleman who was in good health until he began eating three meals a day at McDonald's, which resulted in him gaining 30 pounds and becoming sick. The pharmaceutical companies are setting your children up to be drug addicts. 
President George Bush is going to sign a bill that proposes that all children be psychologically evaluated and those who don't pass the evaluation criteria will be put on a psychotropic drug. Did you know that in 1963 psychiatry moved into our public schools and indicated that if a child didn't behave in a particular manner then he or she had a serious mental disorder that could only be treated with pharmaceutical drugs? Our government subsidizes schools that have their children put on Ritalin. So this indicates who is really making the rules. That legislation came from pharmaceutical companies who've corrupted the politicians. Similarly, all hospitals want children to be tested for high blood pressure and high cholesterol, so that they can get the children started on a lifelong regimen of medication. In the near future, as soon as a child is out of the womb, the medical doctors will find some medication that he needs to be on, whether it be for cholesterol, a mind-altering drug or whatever drug that they can get him on for life. Watch out, folks. This is going to happen if you let this happen. Have you noticed that any time an old building is raised at an intersection, that a CVS, Walgreen or Rite Aid drugstore is erected? This is because going to the drugstore has become as normal as putting gasoline in your car or as eating in fast, garbage, food restaurants. Some pharmacies will even deliver your drugs right to your door. How convenient. We constantly get rhetoric from the pharmaceutical companies that a cure is just around the corner for many so-called diseases. According to government reports, all cancer rates are going up at a very rapid rate. In another 10 years, one out of three women will have breast cancer. Where are all these cures? Drug companies told us in the early 1900s that, again, a cure was just around the corner. Over 50 years later, the best that they can do is to maybe put someone into remission, but to cure them completely would not be profitable. A good example is multiple sclerosis mis. Jerry Lewis solicits trillions and trillions of dollars to find the cure for Jerry's kids and this has been since 1946, nearly 60 years. If somebody were promising something to you for almost 60 years, how long would it take before you became disgusted and disillusioned? And yet, people fall for this. If they do find a cure, it won't be a drug cure, it will be a nutrition cure. You would be shocked at the number of simple, safe, nutritional cures that mother nature has provided us a man named kevin trudeau has written a book entitled natural cures they don't want you to know about of course they is in reference to medical doctors and drug companies he has been on channel 38 in the detroit area mr trudeau just might be put in jail and lose his television show sounds like nazi germany doesn't it tell the truth and go to jail he has shown that there have been hundreds of natural cures that drug companies and the FDA have squashed so that we will never hear of them. I will relate a story to you that you will find hard to comprehend. Some years ago, a natural sleep-inducing amino acid called tryptophan was contaminated from the laboratory that produced it. Several people became sick and one died. Since it was a nutritional supplement, the FDA banned it as a dangerous substance. Never mind that it had been sold since 1967 and had never had any problems, because now it was eliminated from the US market. Note, drug companies hated it because it worked better than prescription sleep inducers. Since it wasn't the amino acid that was at fault, but the actual contamination, a medical holistic doctor in Seattle named Dr. Jonathan Wright sued the FDA to reinstate tryptophan. Well, that did it. The FDA sent federal marshals who entered his office, with their guns drawn, and confiscated his vitamins. They advised him that the vitamins were unapproved substances and that he would be going to jail. The reason why he actually did not have to go to jail is because the marshals had drawn their guns, which is against the law. Sounds like the Gestapo to me. Lately the FDA has been accused by some of its own employees of being subservient to the drug companies. The health food industry is saying publicly that the drug companies control the FDA. If you have cancer, they want you on chemotherapy and radiation and if you have mis, they want you on some miracle drug for the rest of your life that will never really cure the problem. Our wonderful food additives also create problems. Aspartame, Nutrisweet, has nasty side effects such as brain seizures and mimicking multiple sclerosis. But, remember, the FDA approved it. Education is the only thing that can prevent all of this from happening. The problem is that the big corporations are slowly taking over the newspapers. 
Newspapers were created by our founding fathers to be watchdogs of the government. Much like Thomas Jefferson and our founding fathers created watchdogs and the checks and balance system in our constitution. Thomas Jefferson warned of the menace of uncontrolled corporations just as President Eisenhower warned America of the menace of the military-industrial complex in 1954. Why are our antitrust laws being ignored when it comes to multinational mergers? The Constitution states government of, by and for the people, not the big corporations. Newspapers are supposed to tell you the news, to inform you and to give you both sides of the story so that you can make an informed decision. They haven't done that. I believe that for every ad for cola, cigarettes, alcohol and pharmaceutical drugs there should be a contrary ad declaring the side effects of this stuff. I'm not trying to muzzle them, but they are trying to muzzle us and they have done a good job of it. When you open up a newspaper, you won't see what a chiropractor, holistic doctor, nutritional consultant, an iridologist or a herbologist have to say. All you will read is what the medical doctors want you to read and what the drug companies want you to read. In Nazi Germany, Dr. Joseph Goebbels' official title was Minister of Propaganda and National Enlightenment. The people of Germany heard and read only what he wanted them to hear and read. That is very much like today, because the drug companies have shut out any line of thinking that threatens their bottom line. Dr. David Jantz and I wrote an article about Ritalin and children about three years ago and presented it to the Detroit News, the Detroit Free Press, the Maycomb Daily, the Chicago Tribune and the New York Times and they all rejected it. Why? Simple. Money. Each full-page drug company ad, in all American newspapers, is $40,000 to $50,000. Do you think that the newspapers will bite the hand that feeds them? Drug companies certainly don't want the public to hear this, so papers won't print it. If you want a copy, contact me, to be redundant. It bothers me that none of our Christian churches seem to care about the drugging of our children. Detroit's own Mort Prim says that he doesn't like what he sees in the coming muzzling of our freedom of the press. This is not only happening here in America, it is happening worldwide. Multinational corporations are slowly taking over the world. If you are a patient of any holistic doctor or of Dr. Jantz, how long will it be before what he does is against the law? An example of government and big business being in bed together is in the oil industry. We should be burning alcohol, not fossil fuel and oil. But George W. Bush and the big multinational oil corporations will not allow that. They don't want to give the profits to the farmers. They want to keep the profits for themselves without caring what is best for our country, our world, and our environment. So they continue to pollute it. In reality, multinational corporations are just like the kings and queens. The monarchy, of 600 years ago, incidentally, Ronald Reagan, George H. W. Bush, and George W. Bush were all lobbyists at one time for the pharmaceutical and oil industries. This new bill that George W. Bush is writing to fight frivolous lawsuits is designed to benefit the pharmaceutical companies who now are facing multi-trillion dollar lawsuits from all the deaths that they have caused. Is it frivolous when you've been advised to take a hormone and it has caused a heart attack? Is it frivolous when your son commits suicide while he is on the drug Accutane? Is it frivolous that Ritalin can permanently damage a child's brain? Or that all these pain pills are killing people? I don't consider these things frivolous. I consider them crimes. It's not just George Bush doing this. About eight months before Bill Clinton left office, the officials from Monsanto left the White House with a piece of paper that said that they did not have to label genetically engineered food and food products. Now Monsanto is pursuing to control your complete food supply within 20 years. I recently viewed a movie recommended by the Western Price Foundation entitled The Future of Food. Monsanto will genetically engineer all seeds and animals and will have complete control and patent rights. Imagine that. Controlling nature's food. They will become a complete monopoly. This is scary, isn't it? Of course. George Bush's top cabinet aides are Cheney and Rumsfeld who were former board members of Monsanto and Biotech, a subsidiary of Monsanto. The little farmer growing natural food will be gone forever. The political parties are becoming one in the same and this country desperately needs a third party. I've written members of both the Democratic and Republican parties, but, since they both have the same platform of supporting drug companies, what I write and what I protest against isn't going to do a bit of good. 
when I wrote Michigan Senator Debbie Stabenow about this pending nutritional legislation. I knew that she wasn't going to do anything because we have the great pharmaceutical giant, Pfizer, in Kalamazoo, which employs thousands of people and pays millions of dollars in taxes. I was shocked to see that both newspapers printed an ad from Dr. Matthias Rath who's taking the pharmaceutical companies to world court for spreading sicknesses with all of their pharmaceutical poisons. The ad told about how the Bush administration is trying to create legislation to eliminate vitamins and minerals and how the pharmaceutical companies are attacking vitamins and minerals until they can control them 150 million of the 280 million. Americans are taking vitamins and minerals and my wish is that people stand up to the Bush administration and the pharmaceutical companies and not allow this control to happen. Since the Bush administration took office, our country has gone from 10 giant conglomerates in the information industry, as far as what you read, what you hear, and what you see down to six conglomerates in the information industry. Ralph Nader predicts that if we are not real careful, those six will slowly merge down to two companies that will control everything that you see, read and hear. In short, there will be no alternative views whatsoever. If those in the medical profession were as smart as they claim to be, they'd be telling us how to prevent diseases. They claim that they don't know the cause of many diseases, that they don't know how they happen. What do they mean they don't know how they happen? If you are not well nourished, you're going to get sick. It's as simple as that. But simplicity doesn't make money. George Orwell was wrong. It's not 1984. It's 2005 and Big Brother is just getting started. I call it corporate communism and it will eventually come down to two oil companies, two insurance companies, two banks, two media companies and two political parties, etc. It's not a democracy when Ralph Nader has to sue to get his name on the ballot. America was never a democracy in the first place. It's a republic. You don't vote for a president. You vote for a delegate and if he doesn't agree with your vote, he changes it. You and I, as citizens, can't go to the state capital and lobby because we'd be thrown right out of there. Lobbyists can lobby, citizens can't. It's almost communism when there is only two of everything and competition is destroyed. It's not a true democracy when you can really only vote for a Republican or a Democrat because they have shut everybody else out. Five years ago, the Commission for Responsible Government was formed by the Republican and Democratic parties to solidify the two-party system. Have you seen lately where Bush and Clinton are now very close friends? So you are either voting for a bastard or a SOB. It used to be that the Democrats would at least give the middle class crumbs. And crumbs are better than nothing. But now both parties are so much alike and are both taking corporate money. Everything that Ralph Nader says is coming true. My question is who is going to be concerned about the welfare of the common person when our political parties are concerned about the welfare of giant multinational corporations and their money? The Constitution of the United States is the greatest single document in history that grants freedom to the common person like you and me. Corporations are buying influence faster than you can say influence. They are the ones guiding our lives and our foreign policy. Oil companies are controlling our foreign policy. We go to war for the oil when we all we really have to do is let the farmers grow grains to make alcohol. The president, of course, is now only a figurehead for big corporations. You and I have no power individually, but, collectively, we have a tremendous amount of power. The Detroit newspapers don't print any articles or interviews with information from holistic doctors. Ask yourself, why? This could be changed overnight if 50,000 subscribers cancelled their papers until there was a presence of a holistic doctor, a chiropractor, a nutritional consultant, or a cra doctor in the paper. In the movie Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein used genetically altered body parts and mind-altering drugs and the moral of the story is that we shouldn't tamper with mother nature. When man tampers with mother nature, he gets himself in very deep trouble. You should assist mother nature, not tamper with her. Putting a newborn child on drugs is the way the government wants it because they want to control us physically and psychologically. Freedom is not a gift. You have to fight every day for freedom. Even from your own government. Our founding fathers knew that and that is why they implemented the checks and balance system. Our constitution is slowly but surely being dismantled for the good of big corporations. Has it ever occurred to anybody that you and I, as people, are just pawns in a chist game to Madison Avenue and the media conglomerates? 
we are just chips on a checkerboard that they move around when they want us to believe something. Take, for example, how we were inundated with the deception that eating eggs causes heart attacks. That media onslaught was one of the biggest lies perpetrated on the American public, which wound up making trillions of dollars for big business. It was a ploy to get us thinking the way that they want us to think. America is already an illegal drug culture. Now it's going to be a legal drug culture with prescription drugs controlling us from the time we're born to the time we die. George Orwell never saw that one coming. The drug companies are going to have complete control over our minds. In other countries, people have the choice between medications and natural nutrition. When you go to Germany, you can buy St. John's Wort or you can get Prozac. It's your choice. Here in America, a study was done on Prozac versus St. John's Wort and the study said that St. John's Wort was worthless. Who did the study? Why? A pharmaceutical company. Of course. But why is it that St. John's Wort works in Germany and doesn't work here? Slowly but surely, your freedom is being taken away. All in the name of big, multinational corporations and profits. You better be very afraid. If you have any concerns, you'll do something about it protest. Americans are losing their will to protest. They are just doing whatever the mass media tells them to do. The reason why the Republicans and the Democrats don't want Ralph Nader to run anymore is because big corporations are controlling both parties and both parties are taking corporate money. They don't want a guy like Ralph Nader for president because he is telling the truth. Big corporations are writing legislation and they are influencing congressmen and senators. The pharmaceutical industry is drawing a dark curtain over Washington, trying to make it so that, again, vitamins and minerals are dispensed by prescription only. They tried it in 1994 and they are still trying it. Slowing but surely, the real bastards of the world, the pharmaceutical companies, are eliminating all natural herbs. Europeans eat good food and they refer to our food as frankenfurter food. George W. Bush and Monsanto and all the multinational chemical companies are getting very aggravated because the Europeans won't accept our genetically altered food. Knowing that we've tampered with mother nature. When I first started my apprenticeship at General Motors, there was a gentleman named Klaus from Germany and he said that after Hitler took over, the Germans could not understand how that happened. We are going to turn around someday, when multinational corporations and drug companies are controlling us, and are we going to ask, how could this have happened? Ralph Nader says that the direction and the purpose of multinational corporations is to have profits in the trillions and for the little guy, like you and me, to work for six dollars per hour and have nothing. That's their dream and it will become reality if Americans don't wake up and see what is going on. It seems that the American people have become more complacent. They are more concerned about their TVs and their SUVs than their health or their political and economic futures. I often ask people about their visits to the doctor and many of them have told me that the doctors want to check their cholesterol and blood pressure so that they can write prescriptions for Lipitor and for high blood pressure medications. Recently, the laboratory levels indicating high cholesterol were lowered so that the doctors could write prescriptions to even more people. Doctors who prescribe a lot of medicines are very well taken care of by the pharmaceutical companies who wine and dine them and send them on elaborate vacations. It is good business for the doctor to make sure that you are monitored from the day you are born until the day you die, so that he can get you on and keep you on drugs. At St. John's Hospital there is a dining courtyard that serves Pepsi Cola products. Pepsi contributes money to the hospital. Pepsi Cola contains sugar, caffeine, carbonic acid, and phosphoric acid. The more pop that you drink, the more it will pull minerals right out of your body creating arthritis and diabetes, which brings the hospitals more business. When you go to Henry Ford Hospital and walk down the main entrance you will see a fast food restaurant, which, I believe, is Pizza Hut. Unbelievable. The Detroit Medical Center has a basement tunnel that links the various hospitals. In the basement of Harper Hospital is either a Wendy's or McDonald's and it is always jammed with staff, patients and family members from the connecting hospitals. Parents of children who are patients at Children's Hospital often go there to pick up something for their child to eat while in the hospital. These hospitals are promoting hydrogenated oils, white flour, white sugar, and plenty of pop. They know exactly what they are doing. The medical profession is a money machine and anybody who falls for it doesn't understand what is going on. Our latest statistics inform us that our national health expenditures now exceed 1.6 trillion dollars, 
more than the economy of euro. Of course, this money just goes to taking care of sick people and, as you know, Americans are the unhealthiest and fattest people on earth. Are there emerging dissenters in the medical profession? Yes. Along with Dr. Jonathan Wright and Dr. Julian Whitaker, we have in the Detroit area Dr. David Brownstein and Dr. Stephen Margulis, who are both medical and holistic doctors pursuing the natural approach with nutrition and diet. As you might suspect, they are not very well accepted in the medical profession. However, I applaud and respect both of them and consider them my friends. The medical profession is going out of its way to promote harmful things like Prozac, breast implantations, Botox, Ritalin, Vioxx and a multitude of other poisons. Now they even have a form of Botox that prevents you from sweating. Do you realize that perspiring is normal and that it relieves your body of toxins? Yet, they want to stop perspiration. I have a friend whose 16 year old daughter is crying because all of her friends are having breast implants and she isn't allowed to. So she feels inferior. There is a new birth control pill that adjusts women's cycles so that they menstruate only 4 times a year. The drug company promotes it to young women who are looking for a carefree lifestyle. Talk about messing with mother nature. Of course, this madness will absolutely not cease unless the American public apprises and revolts against it. But, sadly, this is highly unlikely and the drug companies and medical doctors are aware of this. They know that things and status consume us. SUVs, electronic toys, 45 inches TVs, the latest fashions, etc. I personally feel that the peddlers of these legal poisons should be put in jail. I am also aware that one day I might get myself in trouble for saying things like this. But I know that if I don't stand for something, then I don't stand for anything. I wouldn't have much respect for myself if I were silent. Are you silent? Nobody is doing anything about all of this except, perhaps, as I understand, the Church of Scientology which is a strong force fighting the drug industry and psychiatric doctors who prescribe mind-altering drugs. Everybody refuses to look at the fact that it is not profitable for people to be healthy. Again, it is not profitable for people to be healthy. It bears repeating to say that it is not profitable for people to be healthy. Hopefully, if I say it enough, it will dent your psyche. Americans don't protest anything anymore. They are just living under the blanket of Big Brother. So whatever Big Brother says, they do. Am I protesting? Yes, I'm writing this article to protest. If you have a keen eye and are aware each and every day, slowly you are being stripped of the freedoms that the US Constitution has given us. Remember what I said when the drug companies and the medical profession make all these laws that benefit them and their profits. You could be jailed for breaking those laws and then someday you will say, how did this happen? And please don't think that it can't happen here. Remember, you alone can prevent all of this by doing one thing. Protest loud and clear for your rights. Ron Kosloff NCNSP Research Nutrition.